Welcome to Virtual Crafts. Based on some recent emails from you guys to create a course on Linux, I'm starting a new playlist in which we'll be covering Linux from the very start and go all the way to making you guys a Linux expert. This video is the first in the series and it will cover how we can install Linux on our computers and from the next video onwards we'll get started on Linux basics to all the way to the end. So without any further ado, let's get started. The Linux flavor that we'd be using in our tutorials is CentOS 7 and to install CentOS we'll need a virtual environment within our current OS. Now you can either use VMware or VirtualBox to create virtual environments. For the sake of this tutorial series we'd be using VirtualBox as it's very lightweight as compared to VMware and comparatively easier to handle for beginners. Okay, so to make this tutorial easy to follow I've modulated the process into subtasks. First we'll download and install VirtualBox. Second, we'll install CentOS on VirtualBox, for which you'll need the ISO image of CentOS. You probably won't have the ISO image, so I've got that part covered for you. The download link of the ISO image is given in the description, so go ahead and download it. So let's get started with the first process. Follow along to not miss any steps, and if you have the VirtualBox already installed, you can skip to the second part, which is the Linux installation part. To download VirtualBox, go to your browser and uh, type download VirtualBox and follow the link that pops up on the top of the page. Make sure that it is the official website of VirtualBox. I'll put this link in the description as well so you can follow it from there. Uh, this is the VirtualBox download page. Here you'll find the virtual boxes for different operating systems. Identify your operating system from this list and follow the respective link. In my case I am using Windows so I'll follow this link and you can see that the download box pops up. I'll start the download. Okay, the download has been started. I'll fast forward this part and continue once the download is finished. Okay, my virtual box has now been downloaded. I'll close the wizard and find the setup file. Ok, here's my VirtualBox setup file. I'll run the installation wizard. Uh, now in the wizard, follow along with the self-explanatory instructions. I'll go next. Here are the VirtualBox features that are going to be installed. Just keep them intact. Uh, you can change the VirtualBox installation location from here. I'll keep it to my C drive and I'll go next. And here I'm getting a warning that proceeding might disconnect me from the network temporarily. So I'll just proceed with the installation. Here are the dependencies for VirtualBox. Let's see if they are installed alongside VirtualBox or we'll have to resolve them manually later. I'll just proceed with the installation. And the installation wizard is now started. Okay, the installation is complete. I'll keep this box checked to start VirtualBox automatically. And this is the VirtualBox window that you'll see. I'll maximize it. Okay, now our first module is finished that we have downloaded and installed VirtualBox. Now let's get started with our second task and that is to install CentOS on our VirtualBox. Before getting started with this task, you will need your uh, CentOS ISO image downloaded. If you have not downloaded it yet, follow the link in the description to download the ISO image. In my case, I've already downloaded it. And here it is. So I'll just go back to VirtualBox. And to create a new virtual machine, I'll click this new button. Here, name your virtual machine. I'll name it CentOS. And let's add the version as well. CentOS 7. CentOS stands for Community Enterprise Operating System. Here you'll specify the installation directory for your virtual machine. In my case, I'm not going to be installing it on my C drive, so I'll just customize my installation directory. I'll create a new folder here. And we'll install my CentOS in this folder. Okay, here you have to add the ISO image that you have downloaded. 
I'll just browse my ISO image and it will be loaded here have you noted that VirtualBox has automatically picked the type and version from the ISO image as CentOS lies in Red Hat so it has picked it for us and as the ISO image is for 64-bit so it has automatically detected it here I have this checkbox saying skip unattended installation now if I click next uh, it will ask me for some configurations and it's going to install my VM unattendedly but I want it to be manual so I'll just check this checkbox and then click next now it will ask you for the memory and your CPUs now if you have 8 gigabytes of memory I will not suggest you selecting any more than 2 gigabytes of memory here if you've got more than 8 GBs let's say 16 GBs then you can just go ahead and keep it around 4 gigabytes I'll keep it to 2 gigabytes and out of the 4 CPUs I'm gonna keep 1 CPU to the VM I'll click next here it's gonna ask me whether I want to create a virtual hard disk uh, whether I want to use an existing virtual hard disk or do not add a hard disk at all as we do need a virtual hard disk for our VM so I'll go with the first option and here you'll specify the size of the disk for your VM so 20 GB is probably enough it totally depends on what you'll be doing on your virtual machine now if you're planning to do some heavy installations on your VM keep your size accordingly but uh, for the tutorial purpose if you're learning Linux 20 GB is uh, enough you can go anywhere you want I'll just keep it to let's say 22 it totally depends on you I'll click next and here is a summary of the configurations I've made for my virtual machine so I'll just click finish and you'll see that a virtual machine has been created now before running this installation task select this VM and go to settings these things are okay go to storage and check if your ISO image has been loaded here or not as we already selected it during the VM creation so it is preloaded here and if it's not loaded here you can load it by clicking this tiny icon here now for the internet part go to the network here are the four adapters for LAN cards that you can enable in Linux currently one LAN card is enabled which is enough but if you want multiple LAN cards to be enabled you can just check this box and it will be enabled I'll keep it unchecked and I'll configure my first adapter if you're using uh, intranet let's say in, in a university or at office just keep it to NAT but if you're going to use this VM at home keep it to bridge adapter don't worry if you're not sure what to do here it can always be changed later I just click OK and I will run the installation visit I'll click on start here you'll see a window slide in from the right that says powering VM up okay the installation visit is started maximize it press any key to boot this VM okay there you see that it's starting installer okay here you'll have to select the language that you're going to be continuing with which will be English definitely I'll just continue now before that I want to clear something up here that if your cursor is not entering this VM here it is because that now there are two operating systems one is our Windows which is our host operating system and the other is this VM which is the guest operating system so both have separate cursors and you can feel what I'm saying by looking at this as soon as I enter the VM the cursor changes and when I'm out of it the cursor is changed now I have enabled the mouse integration due to which this cursor is being shifted automatically look at this bottom right corner and you can see that the mouse integration MI is on on the third line if it is not on you can simply right click it and click this mouse integration button to turn it on and if you don't want to turn it on simply press right control on your keyboard it will not work with the left control press the right control on your keyboard and you will switch the cursor to your VM cursor okay so I'll select the English and I'll continue here choose the date and time and this is important 
once you've chosen your time region click this done button on the top right top left corner you can select the keyboard from here the language here you can see that the installation source is local media and in this part software selection click it and currently the base environment is minimal install which is gonna land us on the DOS or command line interface and if you go all the way down here we have to select this environment which is going to install Xenome desktop with it you can select extra add-ons from here as well I'm just gonna skip that part and click done once this is done go to the system partition and here you're gonna have to manually configure the installation destination I'll click it and down here you'll see that the partitioning will be configured automatically which we are not gonna go with we're going to configure our partition ourselves based on our requirement so I'll select this option and click done okay now we are going to create our partitions click on this plus button and we currently need partitions for root and boot and we are going to create a partition for swap as well swap is the partition of hard drive that is going to act as your memory and your RAM when uh, the specified RAM is not enough so first of all I'll configure boot and uh, desired capacity for boot is 1 GB will be enough so I'll add this mount point cool now I'll add another mount point for root I'm going to click this plus icon here I'll select this slash which means root and I will assign it almost 19 GB I'll add the mount point and you'll see that the available space right now is 2.6 dBs so I'm going to give this available space to my swap and click the plus icon I will select the swap mount point from here and I will give the rest of the space to my swap partition and click add mount point okay now uh, these three mount points have been added I'll click done and I'll click accept changes okay kdump is currently enabled and I recommend you to just go and uncheck this checkbox to disable kdump now kdump is basically a crash dumping mechanism in which if the system crashes kdump will hold the critical or sensitive information from our system which we definitely don't need in our test environment so I'll go done and that is it for now let's begin the installation here we'll add a root password that will be the password for our root user now make sure that you remember this password because this is going to be the only entry point in your system so keep it simple and keep it memorable ok I'll click done if you want to create another user you can create a user here that is not mandatory as root user is already configured but for the sake of this tutorial let's create a new user I'll add a name let's say virtual crafts now you can make this additional user as administrator by clicking this checkbox and you can either require a password for this user or not now having a password for a user is a good practice for security so I'll add a password and I'll click done now while we were doing these configurations the installation is running in parallel now we'll just have to wait for this installation visit to finish I'll fast forward the video here till the installation finishes okay so finally CentOS has been installed and it has taken more than an hour so you're gonna have to be really patient while installing it now I'm gonna have to reboot this virtual machine so I'll click reboot now it's gonna take a minute to reboot and uh, I'm gonna select this first Linux version
okay here you're gonna have to accept the license term so we'll click it and I'll check this box I accept the license agreement and then click done I'll click on finish configuration now this was a one-time thing it's not gonna be there when you run the VM the second time and there we are now we have to log into the CentOS here you'll find the user that we created other than the root user so if you don't want to log in with this user and you want to log in with the root user you're gonna click this not listed button here enter the username of the root user which is root and click next enter the password for the root user that you specified during the installation and click sign in and there we are we have successfully installed and logged into CentOS now let's open the terminal and see if CentOS has been installed properly go to applications system tools and there you have terminal okay this is where you're going to write your commands now just to test whether the installation was proper I'm gonna enter a command that is used to list the files in a directory which is ls so I'm gonna write ls and press enter and it is going to list the uh, directories and files that are present in the current directory so it's all good I'm gonna close the terminal and I will continue from here in the next video in the next video I'll show you how you can uh, make this responsive like now this OS is not wrapped completely in this VM window so uh, in the next video we'll see how we can do that and uh, make this all responsive and we'll also see how we can do some important configurations that you may need uh, like connecting the internet and all so we're gonna take it from here in the next video now if you want to shut down your CentOS click in the top right corner and click this turn off button and click power off this is going to power off your virtual machine and once it has been shut down properly you can close the virtual box here you'll see that the status of the VM is powered off to power on it next time simply select this VM and click on this start button so this is it for today if you're facing any issue or you have any questions you can ping me up in the comment section or you can drop an email at my mailbox if you like the video please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon next to it to receive the notifications of every new video uploaded thank you and see you in the next video